Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. My name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be doing an octopus tentacle. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is search for reference because reference is really important before drawing. You need to know what you're going to do. You need to uh, create ideas. You need to develop your visual library. So in order to do this, you can you can watch uh, YouTube videos in the searching for information meaning, not the nonsense <laughs> YouTube watching. You can uh, Google. Um, there is a lot of stuff you can find in Google, but I really um, are in this case I did it with Google because I didn't have any any quicker way to do it but if I could go to a place where there are real octopus um, that it wouldn't, wouldn't take me too much time I will have done it that will be like the best source um, even books if you have books it will be uh, way better than using the internet so um, at, the, at the right I did a little sketch of the of a cut of the cut of the of the tentacle, how you will look at it if it was cut, which was totally different to what I have in mind um, before doing it, before doing this um, sketch. I imagine it um, different, like more rounded. Um, at the top, you can see I did little uh, doodles, little, little sketches of how the shape could be, and it really doesn't matter that they are like super detailed or anything, just something that worked for you if it works for you it's fine and now we are in the phase that um, I'm going to do a little bit of detail which is actually know that detail my drawings are never so so much detailed but for me it is like um, I solve a lot of problems like in um, the shadows and stuff like that I put a little bit of shading sometimes and in this case, I wanted to do more like a line art or a, at least having a better drawing than what I had at the beginning. So that was my goal in this, this moment. What I'm going to do now is take this to Photoshop and we're going to be using the selection tool, um, the laser, which is like a cowboy laser. laser. You just uh, select everything. Um, it's kind of like a slow process, but it really pays off later. So I'm going to explain you a few tips on how to use this tool uh, because it's really important that you you do know how to use it. Um, and that's that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to give you little tips on how to use this laser tool. Okay, so what I have here is this object which I'm going to cut I on purpose I made it um, a whole image and you can see that the laser is used more like a freehand tool it's not like the other one selection tool which is vector kind of like a vector you click and then click and it's just just straight lines this one is just goes with the flow of your hand and using your pen tablet is perfect with the mouse, it will be more stressful. So we click on the um, laser icon and we just start selecting. But as you can see, I am making a really, really bad job right now. So what we're going to do to repair this is I'm going to get closer and I'm going to use the shift button. When you use the shift button, you can see the little symbol there, the plus symbol, uh, and you can add more selection. So it will be that. Uh, that symbol means adding more selection. If you keep the shift, uh, the shift key um, pressed, you can add more selection. But if you click, um, if you want to do the opposite thing, if you want to erase selection, um, you could use the Alt button. When you use the Alt, you can see the symbol changes. Um, and you can see how it bites. You can see how your selection now uh, bites the one you had before. So this is kind of like the basic uh, things you you should know about the laser tool. So 
So after that, do it, uh, doing that with the drawing, what I did was copy and paste, which is Control C and then Control V. And now we're going to be doing a clipping mask, which is really important uh, that you know how to do. I ex explain it in other tutorials, but I don't want you guys to be jumping from one tutorial to another. So I just copy and paste that selection I did. I took the, everything else off so you can see what I'm working on. And now we create a new layer, which is with Control Shift N, you can create a new layer. And now I click here, clipping mask. So we do a right click, uh, create clipping mask and whatever you draw here is going to stay inside of the of the layer that you have under of the selection that you have under the, the object whatever you have under that is going to stay inside that so that's what we're going to do here but I'm changing the color I'm going to explain that also in a few minutes um, now I got a, a clipping mask and I'm adding this color for the bottom um, for the little, I don't know how to call that uh, thing on the tentacles. I should do a little bit more research. <laughs> um, I'm failing in my own rules. And now I just copy the, the whole thing and I, I went to image adjustments. I want to also explain that later. But I, I just want you to see the process, which is really, um, it's really easy actually once you know how to do it. It's not that um, difficult. And what I'm doing right now is try to jump. Um, on time on the progress of this painting because if you do the same thing just by coloring of course you can do it uh, it's totally understandable that you can want to spend all the whole time painting the whole thing but it's really not that necessary when you're working on digital so you want to jump uh, from uh, progress and now what we're doing is adding just a little bit more of detail um, and trying to fix some things because at the end uh, what we're doing here is just trying to make the image look look better all the time and that's all trying to make a, a little bit better here a little bit, better, little, little bit better there and at the end you end up with a great image it just takes time so I'm also going to talk about the brushes for more towards the end of this video um, because it's something a lot of people ask me. Uh, I've used three brushes in this tutorial, mostly because I didn't plan anything. I, I'm most of the time when I'm doing these tutorials, I'm, I don't know what what I'm going to do. Like I want to be as raw as possible. That I didn't actually practice um, that much. Sometimes I have to do it because they're really complex um, themes. And I don't get it the first time, so I have to record again and record again. But um, this one came out um, pretty cool in the first try, so I just um, just just left it like that. So right now I'm just trying to put some more interesting lighting coming from the right, um, kind of like a backlight. A backlight is a light that you that comes from the back and at one side. And it works to separate the, your shapes from the background. This helps to read the silhouette a little bit better and it gives a more interesting look. It's a more prettier rendering than if, uh, if it doesn't have it. Or if you don't have it and depending what the image is, it could look different. Like it could look more, um, more like a horror image if it doesn't have this kind of thing. Or if it has a cool, cool look, more like a uh, noir kind of look. So now what I did with the with the uh, tentacle was that I just um, <clears throat> create a new layer and put it on clipping mask, and I painted the bottom part of the of the um, tentacle. If I click. Uh, right click clipping mask and there you go your clipping mask and now what I did is copy the whole layer and for the shadows I copy the layer go to image adjustments hue and saturation and then dim the the whole uh, lightness down so in this window you have different values we have lightness uh, we have also saturation and hue this is the saturation, this is the hue, 
and what we want to do is bring down the lightness because we want shadows and what we want to do now is, is erase where we, where do we want the light depending on where your key uh, your key light is coming from we can erase and it gives you a, a feeling that there is light hitting there and that's something that saves you more time than if you just paint it from the beginning like this i mean if what if you don't like it what if you don't like what, what you did and you have to do it again i mean that's the way you have to it has done before so i don't understand people when complains that they take too much time painting in digital if what you were doing traditional it would be a lot more frustrating trust me so now that we explain that let's continue adding a little bit more of detail a little bit more of definition and it's mostly about taking the same color that we already have using the the eyedropper you can use the eyedropper with the letter i with the keyboard or you could if you're painting with the b on the keyboard which is the brush and you press alt you get the the eyedropper and when you when you're not using the, the key the alt key anymore it just goes straight straight back to the b like it, it's just a, a quick way to to access the eyedropper and then go back to the to the brush which is the letter b this process is kind of slow kind of uh you have you gotta have a lot of patience uh, while doing this and it's mostly uh also thinking you have to think uh, you also have to rest so you could get up um, your chair for a few minutes and then go back because it can be frustrating adding a lot of detail without actually know what to do but at the end is more about the time you spend on it than anything else so now that we have this I'm trying here to put some little specular light like a highlight but i'm not getting the feeling that i want so i i got a little bit stressed so i jumped to do another thing that's completely normal you you sometimes you're going to do something and you're not going to be able to do it like you don't you, don't, you just don't get it you just don't get how can you achieve that result you want so here i'm trying different things i'm trying to more like a specular kind of reflection there something more general the lighting um I'm also <clears throat> trying to think of reference. I want to look for reference to see what happened. I mean, like, why, why can I do it the the way I want? And it's just it's mostly testing, mostly testing a lot of stuff. Right now, I'm putting a little bit of the same color that I already have because of the reflections. And now we're going to go to more like a, I, I knew that what I needed was more like a wet look. So I went and looked for this uh, chrome ball that you can look in Google like a chrome ball or reflection ball. And I got this really nice blue gray color from around the, the shiny part of the ball. And what I'm doing with that is filling all the edges of these little tubes here, um, and I'm getting I'm getting that reflection look. Like there is stuff going on around, and I'm is reflecting it. So that's really important for for this idea that I have of the tentacle. And I'm also doing this like a, in a in a clipping mask, like what we talked at the beginning and doing it this way it saves you a lot of time and effort that if you just paint it on the on a layer on top and i'm trying to keep it sketchy because this is not the ending part the ending part it will be the details and when when you get to the details you want to notice a difference in in how the image is finished it's going to look more polished uh, later right now i'm still developing the idea developing the colors the concept uh, this whole reflection thing you you kind of have to go to grab it once you have it then you can um do the detail you can get closer and it's just question of time it's just applying hours and hours 
if you have the time or minutes uh, to get a better image at the end. Okay, so now we are on the on the ending part of the tutorial. We're going to start applying this kind of a little um, um, highlights and reflections, and that's what's going to give the detail. I also use a timer at this point because what I like to do is uh, spend five minutes in one part of the image, and when when that timer uh, hits zero. I just jump to another part of the image, completely random and opposite as possible, like far away from where I am. Because I don't because what happens with me is that I get stuck in just one part of the painting. When I get to the other one, to the really boring one, then I don't want to do it. So I just put a timer and I'm, I just jump to this part or to other part um, really quick. Every time it hits uh, five minutes, depending on what what image I'm doing, if I'm doing something bigger, maybe um, ten minutes. Once I did a painting for a client, and it took me thirty minutes per section, because I use it a grid. Sometimes I use a grid for doing this. Like if the image is too even in terms of um, detail. I just put a grid and spend this much time on each square of the grid. So right now I'm spending 5 minutes in this part or that other part, it's not that precise, but it gives a better look of the whole thing at the end. After looking at some reference, I found out that I need really, really sharp um, highlights. So I, dis I used this sharp um, kind of um, brush that we're going to talk about at the end. And it really gave the look that I wanted. Now I, I, I'm like, okay, I know that this works, so I'm not going to get overexcited about this. And now I'm just going to continue with the other parts of the painting that are actually more boring because if you get too much excited about one part then you forget the other ones so I just try to finish everything else as possible as, as I could of course you could have more detail of course you could look way better but this is a tutorial I just want you guys to learn um, it's not like a painting for a client which I have to take um, about a day or two days painting something that as little as this well if it, it was is a, if it's a huge painting it could take I don't know weeks two weeks three weeks depending on the changes depending on, on how the painting develops anyway um, here I'm just adding more more changes on the light more like a warm uh, color there and at the end we're going to talk about subsurface scattering which is uh, the way the light passes through the skin and I'm going to give you a little example of that um, here I thought it will have some kind of blending with the floor so I, I'm trying to do like a little I don't know something uh, disgusting there <laughs> between the floor and the on the tentacle like uh, some kind of a liquid thing and here I'm using the, the smudge tool, which is with the letter R. Adding more of the brights. Also, I needed um, something around those brights, something soft like this. I used a soft brush and then I made it a um, screen kind of blending mode. And then changed the color with the image adjustments, hue and saturation. So here is what I'm talking 
about the source of scattering. I put my hand on this lamp and you can see how the light goes through my skin. You can see the red, that those reds are actually my the light getting through my skin. So was, that's why it looks like that. And we're going to try to achieve the same result. For that, what I'm going to do, here I'm adding a little bit of background, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy the the tentacle I'm going to go to image adjustments I need a flat color first as you can see here a flat colors and then I'm going to repeat the process and put another color like a, a more like a, a pink and then I'm going to apply a, a mask which I'm going to explain to you later how to make a mask for that and here I'm just erasing where the light should pass through. The, the more thick parts are less likely the light to pass through it. But the really thin ones are easier. So in general will be like the edges. The edges of the things are the most, uh, the less thick uh, part of the object. Depending on the material, of course, it's something like a plastic, of course, it doesn't, it doesn't react the same way. But here what I'm going to do is explain you the same thing. I just <clears throat> take the layer and copy. Then I need a flat color, so I went to image adjustments, scene saturation. You can colorize, but first we're going, we want to need a flat color. Um, depending on what you're doing, is the subsurface scattering in the skin is red because it's the color of the blood but if you're doing something like an alien <laughs> should be like the blood could be green or blue or something so you should keep that in mind uh, on the leaves the subsurface scattering is green of course and there are materials that doesn't have this of course because because of the thickness or the material is if it's a hard material it doesn't happen um, unless it's really translucent plastic here what I'm going to do is I click in colorize and then changing I'm going to use a blue color so now I click here you can see this little icon here and that creates a mask you can see this layer I'm going to click and now I got this little square there and the mask is the white shows and the black don't show so right now everything is white as you can see here so if I click uh, here I change to the black so I can erase uh, you can see how it updates the little square on the layers <clears throat> there you go you can see the black spot there and uh, if I want to do something like turning the colors again uh, as using white as the prime uh, primary color I use black I use click uh, I mean I just press X on the keyboard and those colors change see that's with the X on the keyboard and now I can paint where I want my source of scattering it's really easy so I really hope you like this explanation obviously in this case it will look like a source of scattering uh, exactly because of what, what I'm doing but in a skin or something it should look completely different so I'm going to talk about the brushes that I used um, they're really normal I don't use weird brushes so I'm going to just pick the first one which is a, a round brush a circle brush and it has uh, let's open the tab which is with F5 on the keyboard you can see uh, the brush uh, settings and it has shape dynamics and the prem pressure is on so that means that it changed the size of the tip with the pressure of the pen that's all and the only difference with this one and the one that I use which is the one I use for sketching a lot of times when, when I sketch on digital is that in brush tip shades have, has the roundness and in less percentage something like this so it's flat and you can see that it looks completely different and when you're drawing looks um, cooler for some so to speak um, the other one is the same round brush you can just pick the same one and instead of that instead of being this way it 
what changes is the instead of having shape dynamics have other dynamics or transfer in the new photoshop so this makes that instead of changing the the size of the tip change the opacity and it have print pressure on the opacity jitter so if you want to get off this rear uh, repetition thing you can uh, go to brush tip shape and go down with the spacing and you can see the space the spacing is the time that repeats itself because it's a repetition of dots uh, that's what a line is and the last one is a soft brush which every photoshop has it a soft brush the difference is that I, I activated the other dynamics or the transfer in the new photoshop i activated it because it didn't has it didn't have that one um activated it will really it will be really difficult to control if it doesn't have it so that's it these are the three brushes that i use in this tutorial that will be it for today thank you very much and i wanted to talk to you about my patreon page um which is uh, kind of annoying for some people but a lot of people have liked it so uh, i don't have too much right now but every weekend i upload a new content which is the uh, every tutorial that I do, I just upload it there, but it has all the material without editing. Means, hours, uh, I try to keep it in one hour. The ones of today will be one hour, but it will be a bit speed up. But you can see the whole process of the sketching that I, would, I did today in paper, complete process. You can see the whole painting from zero, some mistakes that I made. I, I even made another reflection didn't like it, have to erase it and start the, the one that is on the tutorial. Uh, it doesn't have audio, but you can pick up a lot of stuff. Also, you get the PSD, which you can use the line art or you can use the PSD to see it like in how 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 it is actually uh, having it in front of you. Uh, it's really different than looking on the tutorial because you can get and see close and analyze it all the stuff that I did so it's just two dollars a month and if you don't want that uh, and you would like to learn how to paint the skin here is a tutorial that I made um, for some time ago you can learn how to paint uh, hair uh, um, like a um, beard on the man and here uh, also the Susuf scattering uh, the rim lights all the stuff the thing is a lot of people were asking me how to paint a skin but they wanted kind of like a recipe for painting a skin because it was really difficult and I actually made break it down a lot of steps and it's basically that a recipe if you do the same steps you pick the same color that I use because I'm giving you even the palettes of skin tones if you pick those same the same color and do the same steps that I made, you you might actually end up with the same uh, results. But you have to practice, of course. It's cannot be done in the first um, because I actually have to do this one three times before <laughs> recording it to get it right. That are the ones that are on YouTube. So it's a guide of 20 pages, two videos, the palettes, skin tones, the line arts. Uh, what else? A lot of stuff. So if you want to help me with that, get to my gum road. Uh, there's a link in the description. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Talk to you next week.